Hey guys, it's Tristan with Victris Games. In this video, I will show you how to rotate and resize objects in GDevelop. Let's start with the rotation. We'll add an arrow from the asset store. And I added this background image to give you uh, some very important information about how angles work for rotation. In GDevelop, an angle that points to the right, like, like this arrow is, that's at the angle is called zero, and then it, as it goes around this way, it goes to 90, 180, and 270. The easiest way to rotate an object, or, or the first way I'll show you anyways, drag this um, handle here. And look over here, and this is the property inspector for the, um, the green arrow object. So the angle's at four right now. Let's go to like 90, Let's see 87 is close to 90. And so that's how you can rotate an object. So one thing that's important to know about how rotation works is it's based off the center point of the sprite. OK, so for editing the points of this uh, sprite. So by default, the auto puts it right in the middle. That's why it's spinning around, like almost like you put a thumbtack right there and you're spinning it. So if you, you can actually move the center point. So let's say you want to spin around this point. Like if you were to stab a thumbtack through there, it would spin differently, right? So now it's it's going to spin from here. In fact, I'll even scoot it over so that the thumbtack's like right, approximately right there. So if we spin it now, see how it's spinning around the the back of that um, arrow. Um, you could actually adjust the uh, angle in here as well. The the box is drawn here is actually uh, a a GUI bug or UI bug. I'm gonna submit that in a minute after I'm done with this video. You understand now how you can adjust where it spins from. That's the the center point. Let's try some other ways to rotate this object. In fact, I'm gonna set this back to zero. The default is zero, and the points. Let's just reset this to the default. Okay. So if we want to change this, we can do it through an action. Let's do um, just the beginning of the scene. Click on the object. And we can uh, set the angle. So change the angle of an object. So we will just set it to, we can say, 45 degrees. And this will apply only at the beginning of the scene. There, that's a 45 degree angle. So that's, you, that's a way you can do it through an action. Um, there's also a way to rotate. Um, let's just start, start at 45, but then after that beginning of the scene, let's rotate it to a different angle. Um, if you don't want it to be instant, there are some pretty cool rotation uh, actions. Um, this looks like um, if you just wanted to keep spinning, let's say it was a, a clock, you can just set this um, so 180 degrees per second. So 360 degrees is a full circle. So this will do a half circle per second. Let's try this. So it's going to start at 45 and then keep going forever like this. And it's spinning around that center point that we've reset. You can also, if you want to spin in the opposite direction, you just say negative 180. And if you want it to be a one-time rotation, like you just want it to go until it hits like 270, we can do that. Let's just disable this one, and we'll do a different one. Uh, we're going to do rotate towards angle. So we're going to go ahead towards 270, and let's just keep it at 180, the same speed we just did. So we're going to rotate towards 270, and once it hits 270, it's actually going to stop, as opposed to this one, which just rotates forever. There it goes. The interesting thing to note is that it always goes the shortest path. That's one of the cool things about rotate. Is so let's put this at um, like a hundred degrees. So it'll actually spin the opposite direction. See how that's clockwise. Uh, that's or we can even do one eighty to make it more obvious. So one eighty is here, and so it's always it's always going to go the closest. So two seventy. If we're going from one eighty to two seventy, that's always the fastest way. If we're going to go, I'll, I'll set it to zero. 
0 to 270 will be the opposite direction. So that's one of the nice features of this, uh, the rotate actions. And I'll show you a third one, third way to do this. Rotate towards a position. So let's just say we want to go towards 0, 0, which is the top left of the screen. And let's keep it at 180. We're starting at 0, and we're going to rotate till it points towards the 0, 0. And this is currently just a static location, but we can change it. So let's, um, there we go. Right here, this is 0, 0 in the game. Actually, it's up here. This is just the uh, graphic that I installed. This is the edge of the game. So there, that works. You can actually make a follow the mouse if you um, choose your X position to be mouse X and Y, mouse Y. It will follow the mouse now. So it still has the same um, rotation speed and it'll always go the closest path. But this is a cool feature. Oh, there's another thing we can show you is you can have the set the angle to uh, rotate towards an object. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually copy this one. Well, remember we rotated uh, towards 270. So that's just right there. Hits 270 and stops. So instead of doing that, you can actually, this is the angle to rotate towards. If you type in a, an object in the beginning, and then I hit tab, it completes the object, and then gives you all the functions you can do. There's an angle to object function here, or expression. And then inside, this is where you put the other object. So the green arrow to the, oh, I need another object. Let's add a target. Let's just add one of these targets. And I'll make the target draggable so that I can move it around with my mouse. Okay, so maybe I'll get rid of this um, angle chart. I had it locked, so I'll have to unlock it to delete it. There we go. So here's my target, and, and we want to make the green arrow always point towards the target. So this could be an enemy or the player, but in this case, we're just going to move it with our mouse. Oh, and here's our new object, target. Let's see if that works. OK, it's working great. And you can always increase the speed, like we talked about. But I think now you've got a handle on how to rotate things in GDevelop. Let's talk about resizing. So similar to how rotate works, resizing can be done in the scene editor. By default, CSS custom size has all zeros and it's not uh, selected. You can adjust the size of an object. You can just do horizontal. You can do a combination of horizontal, horizontal and vertical size change. Um, I don't know if there's a way to... Oh yeah, so if you hold shift, it'll actually lock its um, aspect ratio. So, I'll start over here. So you can you can set it by... Um, well, we have to click custom size. You can set it here. Oops, it's way too big. Uh, just keep in mind that if you are increasing the size of an object, it will lose quality based off its original pixel size. So this this could seem blurry because it's um, not really that's meant to be that large. Okay, so we can do it by by dragging, by changing the properties, and we can also do it through actions. The the thing about actions is it's not really called size. The actions are all called scale. Let's set this back to the normal size. Okay. To change the scale of an object, we can, let's do from the beginning, we will set the scale of the green arrow. So you basically have three options. Scale, that basically keeps the aspect ratio locked and it'll just increase it and, and decrease it. 
or you could just do the Y, which is vertical, or X, which is horizontal. Let's try just the scale. So we're going to set it to um, 2. So by default, the scale is 1. Um, so 2 will be twice as big. So we're going to make this twice as big. Now let's make it 4 times as big. Do you notice how it's growing off to the bottom right? That's because or the position of an object is based off its origin point, and the origin point is, is by default the top left. So that red point there is the origin. So as we're increasing the scale, this origin doesn't move. It just gets bigger down here to the, that's why I said to the bottom right. So 4x big is like this size. But if we can move that origin point and put it in the same place as the center, now it'll act a little differently now. Because the origin is right in the middle of the object, increasing the scale now will keep it centered. So that's something to keep in mind if you're changing scale. Okay, let's look at some more actions. Let's do the uh, scale of just the Y. So this is, a, this is just a vertical. So just a vertical will be four times as big. The horizontal will be the same size. So now it's like really tall. And you can also just change it to the x-axis, which is the opposite. So you can uh, modify these through actions. There's one uh, other way that's kind of fun to work with, and that is, I'll do. I'll talk about this more in a separate video. But you can use the tween behavior. Tween will smoothly animate position, angle, and scale of the object. So you have to add that tween to be able to use any of the tween actions. So now we've got uh, tween behavior on that, and we can do some actions. Let's do a tween. So if you type tween, here's all the things you can do to an object. And um, we want to do scale. So tween the scale. We're going to change it to, let's just do the 4x size. The easing is really fun. This is how you're, how the movement's going to happen. So it's going to be linear, which is just a flat speed change. Or do you want to go uh, ease in means it's going to change slowly at first. Ease out means it's going to change slowly at the end. And ease in and out means it'll go slow at the beginning, fast in the middle, and then slow at the end. And there's a website that I will show you that will let you um, see what these do. Let's just set this at linear. Duration, this is at milliseconds. So you can't say like one for one second. You have to say 1,000 for one second. So I'm going to make it grow four times as big and in linear. There it goes. That's, that's how a tween works. That was uh, one second. It looks like you also have the option of um, scaling from the center. So this actually is takes care of that center point problem we talked about. Nice. So I always stay centered. Okay, so here is that website that I wanted to share that tells you how easings work. So it's easings.net, and if you just mouse over these names, so as time goes on, how will the object move? Here's an example of an ease in function. So ease in means don't change very slow at the beginning and then uh, fast at the end. And let's look at an ease out. Ease out is fast in the beginning and slow at the end. And ease in and out, slow, fast, slow. I use these um, for like a dash animation. I like to actually do like a fast, slow, like a ease out, because it's going to be a fast dash, and then I go slow so the user has time to see where the object has uh, finished, is about to finish its movement. Play around with these, they're a lot of fun, a lot of things you can do. Let's try another type of easing on this uh, scale change. We'll do an ease in, so this should be a ease in. The end is the start, so ease it, slow at the start. Should go slow then fast. And then we can even do an ease in out. Ease in out. So slow, fast, slow. One fun thing you can do with tweens like this and scale 
is you can deform an object to look like it's um, deflating. Let's use this large red ball that I've used in the past to see if we can deflate this ball. Well, we're going to make it wider and shrink its height. Increase its width, shrink its height. So this, we're going to tween it from the scale. We'll go to, let's just say, twice as big and half as tall. Let's see what that looks like in one second. Oh, we didn't point to the right object. There we go. Tween the scale. Oh, we have to add. The, we have to add the tween to it real fast. There we go. Now we've got the tween behavior. Okay, it's kind of fun. All right, that's the basics of rotating and resizing objects in GDevelop. Thanks for watching.